Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bold and Beautiful Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda, and I've titled this week's episode, Completely Blindsided, because Zoe was blindsided and so was Katie. Before we get started, I want to give a special shout out to Renee. She wrote me a lovely comment. I listened to you on James Lott Jr.'s show, and it was wonderful. Thank you so much, Renee, for getting in touch with me, and I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun on the Bold Rewind with James, and even though I was nervous, I think it turned out well. So thank you so much for your support and your comment. I also wanted to tell you guys that I have some things in the works for having some guests on the show and I don't want to say just yet because we're still working out the logistics but I do plan on having some special guests on the show soon. So this leads me into our next bit of news. I want to tell you guys about a podcast that I really really love because it's very funny. It's called The Modest and the Average Podcast. The reason that I really like this podcast is because the host, Naomi, and Cleon are so hilarious. They are obviously good friends, and I love their banter. To give you a little bit of history about their podcast, it started out as a bold and beautiful recap podcast, but it has since morphed into this really funny review of everything podcast. Movies, old and new social media slang, millennial culture, and many other topics. And they also still talk about the main storylines happening on The Bold and the Beautiful. So make sure you check it out. Again, it's called The Modest and the Average. Cleon and Naomi have agreed to be on the show. So I cannot wait. We're just working out the logistics because they are actually in Australia. So I hope to have them on really soon. Make sure you check this podcast out, guys, because it is very funny. Okay, guys, so that brings us into our B&B news. Thomas Forrester is returning to The Bold and the Beautiful. He will now be played by Matthew Atkinson. Some of you might recognize him. He's really handsome and hunky. So I'm actually looking forward to Thomas's return. I don't dislike the character. He has done some crazy things throughout the years. But who hasn't, right? So that's all the news I have for this week. Enough with the chit chat. Let's get to the recap. So that brings us into Monday, February the 11th. The show opens at Reese's apartment with Flo and Zoe. Zoe wants the truth. She wants answers. And Flo tries to stick to their made-up story, but Zoe is not buying it at all. Zoe does apologize for being rude, but she wants answers. She wants to know how in the world her dad got involved in this whole thing. So again, Flo tells her the story, the fake truth, that Reese set up the adoption for her, and he has been a really good friend. And then Zoe makes a comment, what have you dragged my father into? And not thinking, just like automatically, Flo says, yeah, right, more like he dragged me into it. And this comment is not missed by Zoe. So they continue to talk and go back and forth. And finally, Zoe's had enough of Flo's evasiveness. And she says, you know what? I'll just go talk to Steffi. Well, this sends Flo into a panic. And she's like, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't. I've already told you what you need to know. And Zoe says, yeah, that's the key word, what I need to know. Well, Zoe wants to know everything. So Flo thinks really quick on her feet. So maybe she is smarter than I was giving her credit for. Because she tells Zoe that Reese wanted his name kept out of it so that he could protect her. Basically because Steffi is her boss and he didn't want to cause any trouble for her at work. And that Flo, Reese, and Taylor are the only ones who know he was even involved. This definitely makes Zoe 
stop for a minute and think about the whole situation and maybe see it a little bit in a new light. But she is still not sure if she really believes Flo or not. Now we head over to Wyatt's. Sally and Wyatt are still in bed as usual. They both are feeling a little guilty for being so happy when Hope and Liam are so sad. Wyatt has an idea to get their minds off of all the sadness. He wants Sally to sketch. He wants her to work on her athletic line or just whatever she feels like sketching because he believes in her and he knows that her line will be a success. I feel like Wyatt is a lot of times overlooked or underappreciated. I personally love Wyatt, and I think that he is such a sweet person and such a nice guy. I actually liked when he was with Katie, too. I love these two together. I hope that nothing messes this up. But it is a soap opera, so you know that something will eventually mess this up. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But if you're new to to the show, a little information for you. Sally was at one time absolutely head over heels in love with Thomas. And Thomas is returning. So I don't know what this means for Sally and Wyatt. I guess we will see. Now we head over to Steffi's house with Hope, Liam, and Steffi. Steffi is very concerned that Hope may be getting too attached to Phoebe. And that it may not be healthy for her. But Liam's take on the situation is that maybe spending time with a newborn is helping heal Hope. And it makes her happy, so why not? And I agree. Why not? It makes her feel better? Let her do it. Meanwhile, in the nursery, Hope is holding Phoebe. And Phoebe is definitely making Hope feel better. She is falling in love with Phoebe more and more and more every second. Back out in the living room, Steffi and Liam are still discussing what's best for Hope when she comes back into the living room. And she is clearly happy. And she tells Steffi that at first she was concerned about the adoption, but now that she has met Phoebe, she totally gets it. She would have done the same thing. Then Liam expresses that he's concerned that all of this would be too much for her. And Hope says that she actually thought the same thing. But there's something about Phoebe that makes her want to open up. She's very special. Then Hope thanks Steffi for letting her hold Phoebe and be included in their family. At this point, I'm crying Because Hope is being so sweet and she's thanking Steffi and you can tell she truly, truly means it. And she says, you know, it doesn't matter to her, stepmom or aunt. She just wants to be included. And then Hope makes a comment that she can't even think about having another baby because she cannot go through that hurt again. Now Hope and Steffi are crying and so am I. This comment upsets Liam and he stresses to Hope that she needs to keep an open mind about having another baby because you never know what the future holds. Poor Hope. This next part was so sad and so hard to watch. Hope feels that she failed twice. She just can't put herself through that again. Two babies who never got to even take a breath and she is completely blaming herself. Honestly, I probably would be doing the same thing because I always blame myself for my infertility and it's very hard to not do that because you're just so frustrated. Why can't I do what every other woman does in the world? You know, it's it. I get the, her frustration. I do agree with Liam. I hope she keeps an open mind about having another baby, but we'll see. Hope tries to explain to them that she has this darkness inside and following her around. But when she holds Phoebe, it all goes away. And Steffi tells Hope that she totally understands what Hope is going through for the most part. Because she lost a child 
and she lost a twin and it was a really sweet moment with Steffi and Hope bonding. So Steffi brings up to Hope that she's concerned that Hope getting so attached to Phoebe may not be so healthy for her. But Hope assures her that Phoebe is healing her and that she wasn't healing. But when she holds Phoebe, everything feels like it's going to be okay. And that's how Monday ends. So that brings us in to Tuesday, February the 12th. The show opens at Steffi's house with Liam, Hope, and Steffi, and they are continuing their conversation from yesterday. Hope is still trying to explain how she feels when she holds Phoebe, how she is helping Hope to get past all the pain and hurt. Then the girls wake up, and Steffi goes to check on them. Hope insists that Liam go help her. And he is unsure about leaving Hope, but he goes into the nursery to help. Liam and Steffi come back out into the living room with the girls, and clearly Hope feels a little uncomfortable watching them interact. Unbeknownst to Liam, Hope called a ride to take her home. Of course, when he finds this out, he insists she stay, and they can ride home together. But Hope wants to go. But she insists that he should stay and spend time with Kelly. Now we head over to Reese's apartment with Flo and Zoe. Zoe is still suspicious and she wants to know why her dad insists on all this being such a big secret. It does not add up. Flo is now getting upset and she just wants Zoe to drop it and leave. She says you need to call your dad. Flo then raises her voice and tells Zoe that she has nothing else to say, period. So Zoe leaves, but she is clearly not satisfied with Flo's answers. Now we head over to the cabin with Ridge and Brooke. They are both worried about Hope, just like everyone. So they decide to bring her some fresh flowers to cheer her up. But Hope and Liam, of course, are not home. They are at Steffi's. Brooke is truly touched by Ridge's support. And love for her daughter. And Ridge just wants Hope to be okay. Because he does love her. And I'm like finally. Okay. If you're new to the show. Ridge basically raised Hope as his daughter. As his own daughter. And he does love her. I don't know why they have this weird relationship now. She actually used to even call him dad. So finally. Ridge is getting back to being her dad in a way. So Brooke does feel a little concerned that Phoebe's arrival might take the place of Beth's memory, which would not be healthy for Hope at all. Now we head over to Forrester Creations in the showroom with Zoe and Xander. Zoe tells Xander everything that she found out from Flo, but she is still very suspicious because none of this makes sense. Xander wonders if the baby is Reese's. Zoe says she also wondered that, but that Flo insisted that the baby is not his. After hearing everything, Xander is shocked, and he is also suspicious, especially when he finds out the baby is Phoebe. Meanwhile, back at Reese's apartment, Flo is freaking out, and she texts Reese, Need to talk about your daughter. Call me. It's important. Now we head back over to the cabin with Brooke and Ridge and Hope. Hope has just arrived home and she loves the flowers. She thanks them for being there for her. And she admits that so far only one thing has actually made her feel better. And that's Phoebe. This concerns Brooke. Like everyone else, that Hope spending time with Phoebe could be doing her more harm than good. So Hope tries to explain how she feels so much better when she's with Phoebe and how she is just so special. And for some reason, when she is holding her, she feels at peace. Now we head back over to Steffi's house with Steffi and Liam. Liam is making sure that Steffi is okay because he feels bad that he hasn't been there more to help and spend time with Kelly. But Steffi, being very sweet, assures him that she understands because his top priority right now is 
and should be hope. And it's nice to know that she has his support. Steffi is worried that Hope's behavior is a little unhealthy. She feels like it's too soon. She doesn't want Hope to replace Beth with Phoebe. Liam totally gets it. And he does appreciate Steffi letting Hope come over. Because right now it seems to be helping instead of hurting. And it actually makes her happy. So he thanks Steffi again. And he comments that Phoebe and Kelly are so lucky to have Steffi as a mother. And that's how Tuesday ends. That brings us into Wednesday, February the 13th. The show opens at Forrester Creations in the showroom with Xander and Zoe. Zoe is bummed because she knows something is not right with this adoption. She just has a really bad feeling about the whole thing. Xander wishes Zoe's dad Reese was there so they could question him in person, and so do I. They both feel that this is a hell of a coincidence. Zoe is determined to find out the truth, so she decides to go see Flo one more time. Now we head upstairs to the executive office with Hope, Sally, and Pam. Pam is being so sweet to Hope, and she gives her dinner theater tickets. You know, the place with the knights and the huge drumsticks. And Hope really appreciates Pam trying to help. It's, it's a very sweet moment. They hug it out, and then Pam leaves. Wyatt then comes into the office, and he says, What I always say, enough with the chit-chat. Our fearless leader is back. Let's get to work. I just had to put that in there because I always say enough with the chit chat. And I thought that was so funny. Sally shows Hope some of her sketches that she has been working on for Hope for the Future. She's really nervous and anxious to get Hope's feedback. And Hope really, really loved the sketches. She really did. And I thought that that was very sweet because Hope and Sally do not have the best relationship so, Hope thanks both of them for trying to get her mind back on work, but she admits it works at times, but as much as she tries, her mind goes back to Beth, always. Then Wyatt tries to tell Hope that she has to stop blaming herself because it is not her fault. I want to give y'all a warning. We're now headed over to Katie's house with Katie and Thorn. And I'm sorry for the heartbreak that you're about to have to endure. If you're a huge Katie fan, this was hard to watch. So we're at Katie's house. Katie asked Thorne to be her valentine. And Thorne is acting weird. Okay, he's just acting weird. He's saying one thing, but his body language is saying something else. And they start having this weird conversation about how much they appreciate each other and how lucky they are to have each other. But I want to note that Thorne keeps speaking in the past tense. Like, it's been great. It was great what we've had and stuff like that. And Katie is picking up on his very weird behavior. So then Thorne says... There's something I really need to tell you. And he drops a bombshell on Katie. He tells her he doesn't think they should have gotten married. And he wants an annulment. Poor Katie is completely blindsided. Now you see where I got the title. She doesn't even know what to say. You can tell on her face that she is just, this is complete shock to her. She thought they were happy. Thorne thinks that they got married too fast, and they also got married partly for Will. It almost sounds like he is a little jealous of Bill's relationship with Will now. I don't understand his explanation, and it makes no sense, and I'm having a really hard time with this. Then Thorne has the nerve to say that he loves her, and he's doing this out of love for them. And he says he feels like he's in the way, and he doesn't want to get between Bill and Will's relationship. Now that Bill has stepped up, 
he doesn't feel that he is needed. He also says that he misses his daughter so much and he never really dealt with her death and he unfairly was using Katie and Will to fill the empty space he fills. I can kind of understand that a little bit, but you don't have to blow up your life to deal with grief. It, it's not like a necessity to completely just blow up your life because you need to grieve. This whole thing is strange. None of it makes sense to me. And poor Katie looks like she does not get it either. Thorne then pulls out annulment papers. So he has already had annulment papers drawn up and everything. Ouch. Poor Katie. She is in shock and I feel horrible for her. She doesn't even know what to say. She's kind of speechless. Now we head over to Flo's apartment. I am going to start calling it Flo's apartment because that's what it is now, technically. So over at Flo's apartment, she is panicking. She's like in panic mode and she is still desperately trying to get in touch with Reese. So she texts him again that he needs to call her ASAP. It's important. It's an emergency. Then we flip to, I assume, London and we see Reese and he is definitely getting Flo's text messages. He's just not answering yet. Back at Flo's apartment, Zoe arrives and she puts the key in the door. She unlocks the door and she cracks it open because the chain is on. So she can't open it all the way. Inside, Flo is on the phone with none other than Reese. He finally called her back. Flo is talking to Reese and freaking out. She explains what is going on with Zoe and everything that's that's been happening and how she's totally panicked. And unbeknownst to Flo, Zoe is standing at the door hearing everything. So Reese says, don't panic. I'll take care of it. And they hang up. So when Flo turns around, she notices the door is open. So she goes over to the front door. She undoes the chain and she sees Zoe standing there. Zoe is like, look, be straight with me because I just heard the whole conversation. And if you don't tell me the truth, I'm going to go to the police. So Flo just can't take it anymore. And she breaks down and she tells Zoe that Reese switched the babies. And that's how Wednesday ends. So that brings us in to Thursday, February the 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you all had a good one. The show opens at Wyatt's house with Wyatt and Sally. They both feel so lucky to have each other on this Valentine's Day. Sally does tell Wyatt that she is a little worried she might have overstepped earlier with Hope. But Wyatt assures her that he thinks it was a good idea and Hope appreciated it. They decide to spend Valentine's Day together in bed instead of going out. Big surprise. You guessed it. They do it again. They knock boots, whatever you want to call it. They are intimate again. And it's obvious that they are so happy together, which scares me a little bit because usually on soaps, if you're really happy, something horrible is about to happen. Now we head over to the cabin with Hope and Liam. And yes, this is sad, so fair warning. Hope found a really cute little Valentine's Day outfit that she would have dressed Beth in. And Liam doesn't even say anything. He just hugs her. And Hope feels that she is going to have to find a way to move on. She just doesn't know how. So Liam suggests that they go out for Valentine's Day. But she is really not up to it. She wants to just stay in together alone. So Liam says that's fine. And then he starts feeling really bad for Hope. Because she keeps bringing up how it's her fault. And she keeps blaming herself. And it's really hard to watch. Liam is trying to get through to her. 
and let her know that it's not her fault. But when you're in the situation that Hope is in, you you just can't hear it. Like, I went through the same thing when my mom died because I was her caregiver. And I just second-guessed everything that I did. Especially after she passed, I just blamed myself for everything and second-guessed every decision and every single thing. And so... I get what she's going through. These two are so sad. They end up cuddling on the couch together, and it's very hard to watch. Now we head over to Katie's house with Katie and Thorne. Katie is understandably very upset. Annulment papers on Valentine's Day, really? Like, that's cruel. Katie cannot believe what Thorne is doing, and she wants to know why. But his explanations are like half ass. Like, really? So he claims it's out of love for her and Will, which is BS. And Katie wants him to talk to her, right? She wants him to sit down and talk this out. But he makes it clear that he's made up his mind. He wants out. He admits that he has his own stuff he needs to work on. Then he says that... He really is protecting himself because he doesn't want to get hurt. Deep down, he really feels like Katie would rather be with Bill. So this just completely, like, Katie's like, what are you saying? Like, you're being crazy. So she says, I'm over, Bill. We've been divorced for years. Poor Katie. She does not deserve this. I'm sorry, but she does not deserve this. So she desperately tries to change his mind. Then in the middle of their fight, Will gets home. And you know how kids are. He immediately senses something is up. So he asked, what's going on? So Thorne tells him that he has to go away for a while. Will wants to know, how long are we talking? How long are you going to be gone? So Thorne tries to explain that He has to leave because he needs to deal with the loss of his daughter and he never really dealt with it. He's going to Paris to deal with all of the stuff that he needs to deal with. Will is very sad, but he is especially worried about Katie. He wants to make sure that his mom is okay. And it was, it it was very sweet. Now we head over to Flo's apartment with Flo and Zoe. Flo admits that Reese switched the babies. Dun, dun, dun. Then we go to London and we see Reese nervous and pacing. And he's thinking about what he did to Hope and Liam. Back at Flo's apartment, Zoe does not want to believe what she is hearing. But Flo insists that Reese did it to protect Zoe. He did it to protect her. So Flo explains why Reese switched the babies because of Vegas. Zoe is completely blindsided by this information. She wants to know everything that Flo knows. And then, of course, Flo's like, you need to call Reese. But Zoe is not hearing it. So finally, Flo says, look, that's all I know. The only other thing that he told me is that the real mother's name is Hope. Now Zoe is speechless. She immediately gets out her phone and calls Reese. As soon as he answers, she starts yelling at him. She tells him that she knows what he has done. And then poor Zoe starts crying, and she demands for Reese to tell her she is wrong. But of course he can't. He begs her to not say anything. He is catching a flight out ASAP to see her and explain. But she already knows the truth. And she hangs up the phone. Then we get a split screen. Because you know they love a good split screen. On the left we have Zoe upset and crying. And on the right we have Liam and Hope cuddling on their couch looking very, very sad. And that's how Thursday ends. 
So that brings us into Friday, February the 15th. The show opens at Steffi's house with Steffi and Hope. Hope has stopped by to help Steffi with the girls. And Steffi is surprised to see Hope there so early. Hope genuinely wants to help Steffi. She starts folding clothes for her and they're chit-chatting. And then Hope explains that she knows Steffi probably doesn't need her help. But she needs Steffi's help. Because being at her house, helping and being around the girls makes her feel better. It helps her. Steffi is being really sweet to Hope. And it's really nice to see these two getting along. Phoebe wakes up and Hope jumps into action to help Steffi. Now we head over to Forrester Creations in the side office with Katie and Wyatt. They both agree that Hope's personal life doesn't need to be out there on social media. Wyatt wants their press coverage to be more about the line than Hope's personal life. And Katie couldn't agree more. So basically Wyatt wants Thorne's help with all of this, which forces Katie to tell Wyatt her sad news, that Thorne is gone and they ended their marriage. Wyatt is, you guessed it, blindsided. He is completely stunned to hear this news. Katie does her best to try to explain to Wyatt what is going on and what happened she tells him everything but she admits that she is confused herself and doesn't really understand it so she's not surprised if Wyatt doesn't get it either Wyatt points out that he knew at the custody hearing Thorne wanted Bill completely out of Will's life and that he was surprised that Katie didn't see it then And I'm like, wow, Wyatt, that is a really good point. Then Katie gets a text and it's Thorne, but she doesn't look at it and she doesn't answer it. And Wyatt says, maybe you should get that because maybe he had a change of heart. So Katie makes a face like, yeah, right. And then she shows Wyatt the annulment papers. No, uh, he meant it. Look, and she shows him the papers. Wyatt starts to wonder if maybe Katie does have feelings for Bill. Because the last time they were divorced, she remarried him. I'm like, wow, Wyatt, that is another good point. So then Katie says something that completely cracked me up. And she tells Wyatt, if you repeat what I said, I will hurt you. So Katie says, I don't get married for a living like my sister shady af and it was cracking me up if brooke heard that she might not think it's so funny so katie goes on to explain that thorn felt like the odd man out and she's mad at herself for not realizing it sooner because she feels like other people including will kind of saw this coming and she didn't She thinks all of this is her fault because she pressured Bill to be a good dad. And then she says, like, really? I mean, who really thought he would do it? Now we head over to Spencer Publications with Bill and Justin. We're in Bill's office and Bill is in a very funny mood. He is practicing magic tricks to show Will and Justin is not that impressed with his skills. It was really funny because he was aggravating the crap out of Justin. So Bill makes the comment that he needs some magic to get Wyatt and Liam back in his life since he is the one that made them disappear. Bill is really missing his sons and you can tell. So Justin's advice is for Bill to make sure that he pays attention to Will because Will needs him. Then Justin points out that the only reason that he even has Will back in his life is because of Katie and he needs to remember that okay guys I hope you're ready because it's getting really good now now we head over to Flo's apartment with Flo and Zoe Zoe wants the whole story from Flo but she truly doesn't know everything so they are waiting on Reese to arrive from the airport Zoe while they're waiting 
asked Flo why on earth she would go along with this scheme. So Flo tries to explain that when someone you care about is in trouble, you drop everything and you help. No questions asked, right? Um, I'm not so sure about that. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. I think most people would ask several questions, especially when it comes to a, a baby, <laughs> like some random baby that he could have stole from a hospital or whatever. Like, I think you would ask questions, but I, I don't know. That's just me. So Reese finally arrives. Zoe is so mad. She is pissed. And as soon as Reese gets in the door, she says, how could you do such a thing? Selling a baby, really? Then Reese looks at Flo. And Zoe says, don't look at her. You look at me. And I'm like, yes, girl, you go. So Reese tries to explain that she was in danger. But Zoe is not having any of it. She thinks that he did all of this to save his own butt. And if she was in danger, it's his fault to begin with. How could he do such a thing? And Reese says he thought he had no choice. And when he said that, it reminded me of something that my husband always says. You always have a choice. It's just you don't like the choices, but you always have a choice. So Flo decides that she should leave so they can talk. And before she goes, Reese apologizes for dragging her in to this mess. And she says, you know what? You're not as sorry as I am for going along with it. Then she leaves. Reese admits to Zoe that he needed 250000 to keep her safe. Zoe is now furious. He tries to get her to understand that he was walking around desperate every day. It was horrible. And Zoe says, you know what? Hope knows what that feels like. Basically, Zoe's like, I know why you did it. Now I want to know how. So Reese has no choice. He tells Zoe the whole story. Everything from the beginning. Zoe is devastated. The poor thing is crying and it is clear that this is making her sick. Then she goes off on Reese. You have no idea what Hope's been going through. She's a shell of herself. It's what we do now that matters. Well, of course, this sends Reese into a complete panic. And he's like, no, 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 no. We can't say anything. What's done is done. But Zoe, she's not having any of it. Any of it. And I'm like, don't start with that BS. Because that babe, it just happened. You can fix this. So then while Zoe is still talking, we the, the screen flips over to Hope at Steffi's house feeding Phoebe. And so you're seeing Hope feeding Phoebe, but you're hearing Zoe speak. And Zoe tells Reese straight up, if you don't tell Hope, I will. And that's how Friday ends. It was really exciting. Okay, guys, so let's break this down. Wyatt and Sally, these two spent pretty much the whole week in bed. They did manage to make it to work. So that's good, but we can definitely say these two are happy together. I love them together, and I just want Wyatt to be happy, and I want Sally to be happy. My prediction is that either we will hear wedding bells soon, or Thomas will try to destroy this couple. Not sure yet which. Okay, let's talk about Steffi. Steffi is really concerned that Hope is getting too attached to Phoebe and it's not healthy. She also does not like that she's the mother, right? And she doesn't like that Hope is stepping in, I think. I think it's making Steffi a little insecure. I think she's worried that Hope might be hurting herself in the long run. And I also think Steffi's intuition is telling her something is off. But she is just 
not quite sure what it is. My prediction is that this is going to hurt Steffi a lot when the truth comes out. And I really don't want to have to watch that, to be honest. She doesn't deserve it. And I am mad that we have to go through it. Let's talk about Katie and Thorn. What the F, right? Like, what in the hell is Thorn's problem? This is irrational. And poor Katie was so caught off guard and so blindsided by this. I felt horrible for her. And why did he have to do it on Valentine's Day? Like, what a jerk. I honestly can say I'm not really sure how I feel about this. Don't get me wrong, I feel bad for Katie, but I don't know if I ever truly bought into them as a couple. I, I don't know, to be honest. I can tell you this, that they really could have done so much more with Thorn, and, th and that's disappointing. Because it's not like they hired some newbie who doesn't really know what's going on. They hired a very talented actor in Go. And I think that he really could have done so much more. And it's disappointing because I think he's probably now on reoccurring status, which is sad. My prediction for Katie is that she most likely will get back together with Bill. I feel like that's coming I know a lot of people may not like this. I'm fine with it. I think they make a good couple. I just don't want him to hurt her again. Like, I don't know what it is. Every time he's with someone, he does something to hurt them. I'm glad Brooke is not getting back with Bill. I know that may be controversial, but I'm glad. Because I don't like Bill and Brooke together. I don't like it. It's not right and it's just, the whole thing is weird. And I don't think that Katie really likes it. I think she just dealt with it because she had no choice. I personally would have never done something like that to my sister. Let's get into Hope and Liam. I keep hearing rumors and seeing things on social media that this is going to break Hope and Liam up. I really hope not. I hope that all of this does not break them up. Because they deserve to be happy together and to enjoy being a family with Beth. At least for a little while. Plus, Jacqueline, who plays Steffi, should be going on maternity leave soon. Surely they won't string this out that long and make us wait all the way till she gets back. I mean, I really hope not. I will be extremely devastated if this breaks up Hope and Liam. I think that they make a good couple. In my mind, they make more sense than Steffi and Liam. I know there's a lot of Steffi and Liam fans, and I'm not completely against that. But I can tell you, I've been watching this show for a long time. And when Liam gets with Steffi, he's never really happy. He tends to do things that hurt her. And I would rather her not be hurt. I could go down a whole list of things that prove Liam never is truly happy when he's with Steffi. He says he is. But then he does things like, oh, I don't know, kiss other people. You know, so it's like... Please don't get mad at me. This is just strictly my own biased opinion. I personally like Hope and Liam together better than I like Liam and Steffi. I would like Steffi to find someone who only loves her, who does not want anyone else, who's just head over heels in love with her, who has more of a personality, more of a personality like Bill. Because I feel like that would match Steffi's personality well. My prediction, or I should probably say my hope, is that we soon find out the truth. So that Hope and Liam can be with Beth and be happy. Now, 
Let's talk about Zoe. I am so happy that Zoe knows the truth. Honestly, I was not a huge Zoe fan. I like her a lot more now. I was really on the fence with Zoe and I can, I'll tell you why. Because I liked, I really liked Emma and I thought Emma and Xander were a cute little couple. So when the whole Xander love triangle was going on, I will admit I was not a huge fan of Zoe. I did not like the way that she handled everything in that situation, but the way that she is handling everything now has made me really like her more and more. She is definitely a badass. I love that she refused to stop until she found out the truth. She just was not going to let it go. But here's what I'm really, really worried about. I'm worried because if you think about it, Zoe is in a similar position, not exactly the same. So don't everyone yell at me or write me dirty messages. But Zoe is in a similar position as Steffi was with Taylor about going to prison. Because if Zoe tells Hope, then her father will most likely go to prison. So she is stuck in the middle. And I am concerned that Reese and Flo will talk her out of telling the truth. If she keeps this secret for them, I will be devastated. You know what? If she keeps this secret, she's just as guilty as they are. And I will be very disappointed and probably not like her again. Although I will admit that most people, including myself, would keep a secret for their parents, mother or father, to keep them out of prison. I feel like if you really love them, it's something that you would at least consider. So I do understand where Zoe's coming from. And I feel sorry for her. What kind of father would put their daughter in this situation? It's just really sad and it's really effed up the whole situation. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of the episode. I truly wanted to change the music and put something a little more cheerful, but I just could not bring myself to do it, mainly because a couple good things happened, but For the most part, it was really sad still. You were still having to go through the sadness with Liam and Hope and Beth. And like, like that wasn't enough. Then they add on the whole Katie, Thorne, Will breakup. And I'm like, you know what? I cannot change that music yet. I'm sorry, guys. I just can't. So I am keeping the Chopin death march until Hope and Liam Find out the truth. Don't forget to check out the Modest and the Average podcast. It's really funny. I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoy the show, please give me a five-star rating on whatever directory you get your podcast from. It helps the show to move up and be seen by more people. Please get in touch with me. I want to know what you guys think. I want your feedback, your predictions, your comments, good or bad. I want to know what you guys think. You can get in touch with me at thebeautifulpodcast.com. I am also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can get in touch with me any of those ways. I put the links in the show notes to make it easier for you guys. Thank you again for listening. I will be back in your ears next week. Until then, bye guys.